Hey guys, so we're back with another review with the Flute Sign of New York. So yes, this video is sponsored by the Flute Sign of New York. Before we begin, I want to let you guys know about a couple of perks that you can use using my code JAF when you purchase a flute through the Flute Center of New York. Number one, you get free domestic shipping within the US. The shipping costs will be charged up front to you if you take flutes out on trial, but it will be refunded back to you once you return the flutes that you are not going to buy. Number two, you get an extended 10 day trial. Usually it's only seven days. Number three, you get an extended 18 month warranty and number four you can take up to three instruments out on trial at a time just to be completely transparent i do earn a small commission each time my code is used if you want to take flutes out on trial it's really easy all you have to do is contact the flute center in new york via phone or email give them my code and they'll take care of things from there i will put the link to their contact page in the info bar below just make sure that you're actually in the market to buy though because it's unfair to other people who actually want to buy the flutes that are out on trial the flute center of new york also price matches any other authorized deal so you're always getting the best bang for your buck now when trying flutes make sure you take off all rings and dangly jewelry that can potentially scratch the flute never use the polishing cloth the cleaning rod or the cleaning gauze that comes with each new flute because they are not yours yet and last but not least a little disclaimer every flutist plays each flute differently like in harry potter just as the wand chooses the wizard so the flute chooses the flutist i'm just here to describe to the best of my ability how how these flutes like to be played by me. My mouth shape is not going to be exactly like your mouth shape, so whatever happens inside of my mouth, you may find that you have to shift it slightly. So if you are going to buy a flute, you do need to try them. Okay, let's get into today's video. We have some very special guests here today. An alto flute and a oh, bass flute. I'll put a little close up here just so you guys can see the size difference between the flutes. I know that some of you don't even actually play the flute. You just actually watch these for fun. So here you go, at least to a flutist. These are massive. I realize that even the bass flute case is still not as big as a bassoon case. Carrie, if you're watching this, I, I know. Now, the really cool thing is that we actually have some special codes for you guys to get some savings. If you use JAF Jupiter to purchase Jupiter 1000 and 1100 series flutes, piccolos, alto flutes, and bass flutes, you will get instant savings. And as a little extra, if you use JAF Azumi, you can get instant savings on the Azumi models one, two, and three. I also do get a commission if you use these codes, but you also get savings, so win-win. I'll put links in the bottom bar below that will automatically add these codes to your cart if you are purchasing through the Food Center New York's website. Now, these rebates only last until 11.59 p.m. December 31st, 2018. So if you're watching after this, I'm sorry it has ended. If you're watching before 11.59 p.m. December 31st, 2018, act quickly. We are going to start with the Jupiter Alto Flute. This is the Jupiter Alto 1000X, which comes with a straight and curved head joint, formerly the 500 series. The 1000 model features silver plated straight and curved head joint, silver plated body and mechanism, ergonomic finger position, double skin pads, and stainless steel springs. Also, I noticed that the serial number on this is two. Yeah. It's two. My first impressions opening this up, the cleaning rod is clear. I've never seen a plastic clear one before. Look at that. It just looks really cool to me. The logo is on the top and the bottom of the case. Normally I'm used to the case on the inside having a rounded side and a flat side and usually the flat side is the one that goes on the bottom but it's flat on both sides so just make sure that the buttons are on the bottom half of the case i did find that just a tiny bit confusing i really did almost open the case upside down i'm going to be doing this review on the curved head joint simply because it's more comfortable for me but i did notice that even the straight head joint, I didn't have too much problem holding it up. There it can be an argument made for the straight head joint resonating differently than the curved head joint. I am such a small person that I think I personally would default to a curved head joint anyway, but it is nice to have 
the choice between the two. The left hand index finger key has been raised really high. It reminds me of how I've put a piece of cork on my own flute to raise it up. And that way I don't have to squeeze my finger as much. I love that. It, it feels really nice to me. The right hand middle finger key they have placed that assisted fingering like way far forward i think it's the most far forward i've ever seen before it really makes it easy to hold the flute when you use the straight head joint because your hands are way further out now about the packaging of this flute so it comes in a woven case that's been lightly padded. There's piping all around on the inside. It is a French model case for an alto flute, which I think is really nice. It looks very classy. Again, we've got that clear cleaning rod, got that microfiber polishing cloth. There is an owner's manual, but this owner's manual is actually the same manual that they include in all of their flutes. So the pictures inside are for a C flute, but you care for an alto flute and a bass flute in the same way that you care for a regular C flute. And then there is a quality checklist that has been stamped by inspectors. All right, so let's get to noodling around on this alto flute. For low notes, big pocket of air, like, all up in here and it also kind of puffs out the bottom of my cheeks too i feel like i am seriously going full bullfrog for the absolute lowest note like the low c which is actually a low g the air comes out straight like that as i go higher this ball of air moves upward the ball of air is now like up here but the interesting part for higher notes I'm used to aiming the airstream up, but what I find is I have to aim the airstream at the same exact spot too. Essentially what I'm doing is imagining a little target right here, right in front of like the lip hole. I basically have to follow it with the airstream coming out of that pocket of air. The one point that's not moving is the point at which you are aiming, but everything else inside of your mouth is moving according to how high or how low you're going. And now for harmonics. <laughs> If you play like this, your harmonics will pop out really easily. I do find it's really easy to get all the way up to the sixth harmonic and I can slide up to the seventh harmonic from the sixth with some effort. I think that's more something that like I can't get now, but if I were to buy this, I would just need to work at it a bit more and I would be able to just like pop the seventh harmonic out on my own. And now for tone color. <laughs> If you want a richer tone, what you do is you take that pocket of air, wherever it is in your mouth, and you squash it down. And I almost feel like I'm stretching out the sides too. It would look squashed like this. For a hollow tone, you do the opposite. So I squish it from the sides. It'll end up looking like this instead. Down here is for like low notes being super hollow. Up here is high notes being super hollow. And now for dynamics. <laughs> to do with that pocket of air again. The more forte you want to be, the more you expand that pocket of air. So if we're down here, we would expand it like this. At least that's how I'm imagining it. That's a little bit extreme. If it's higher, you do the same thing. As big as you can get it. Conversely, the more piano you want to be, the smaller you go. So nice and tiny. The center of that pocket of air doesn't actually move. It's just everything either expands from the center or it shrinks into the center. All right, and now for the mechanism. <laughs> all 
the assisted fingering stuff that I talked about earlier. The keys themselves are fairly bouncy with a little bit of resistance. I like that. That's a, more of a personal preference for me though. Some people don't necessarily like it being that bouncy. I like the kind of pop that it gives to your notes when you're playing. It sounds crisp to me. All of the keys, including the B-flat lever and the trill keys, they all have the same resistance. So there's no especially floppy key or anything like that. So quality control, very good. It feels really good to the touch too because then you don't have to control your fingers like crazy for you know any keys that might have less resistance. Now if you have small hands like me, I would suggest getting something like flute gels. I know someone who uses them and looks like it works great. So they're little gels that you can stick onto the flutes. I noticed that for me because my hands are so small, I'm pretty much holding up the flute instead of pushing against it. I just need a little bit of height and a little bit of friction, and I think I would be a lot more comfortable. And now for articulation. <laughs> For single tonguing, we are using what I'm terming faux French tonguing. Real French tonguing is when you tongue from between your lips. It's an effect that works really well on French style music. But here, we are tonguing from between our teeth. In terms of faux French tonguing, I feel like this is the most forward I've ever done it. My tongue is coming up like this. It almost feels like it's halfway to the outside edge of my lips. For double tonguing, the K part of the double tongue hits the middle of the roof of your mouth. And you're doing it so lightly that it almost feels like a false tonguing. Instead of thinking K, think G so that you don't accidentally do it in your throat. I discovered recently that that's an American thing that we tend to say ta ka and da ga using our throat, but not everyone else in the world pronounces it that way. You might want to think about creating those consonant sounds against the roof of your mouth rather than in your throat. De ge te ke. So in this situation, because it almost feels like a false tonguing, it's easier for me if I think of dege, 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 dege. So now let's move on to the Jupiter Bass Flute 1000. Here are the specs. Formerly model 523, comes with a silver plated curved head joint, silver plated body and mechanism, pointed key arms, and ergonomic finger position. Ugh, monstrosity. I love it. Let's start with first impressions. I noticed that there are these like rubber feet on the spine, which makes it fairly clear that they know that this thing is going to be exposed to the elements. You're going to be setting it on the ground. The case is also noticeably stiffer than the alto flute case, thereby making this far more durable. There are special elastic bands on the inside edge of the case that holds the extra long wooden cleaning rod. The left hand metal rest has its own little corner in the case, which I thought was really cute. I do like that it pops in and it doesn't like move around. Quick note, the foot joint needs to be placed in the case in a certain way. So first you have to slide the end with the pinky keys over, like there's this little nub inside of the case. Rest the actual D-sharp tone hole key against, there's like a little rest right there, and then you push the other end into the case. Slide, push. The way that it's held in there, it does not move. An interesting thing that I noticed about both of these flutes is that the curved head joints has to be turned upside down in order to fit into the case. It does fit a lot better in the case when you do it that way, so I do think that's kind of genius. Love the super assisted fingering on the bass flute. The right hand pinky keys extend way far out, pretty much on top of the last key on the middle joint. This bass flute also has the same extended height for the left hand index finger, very comfortable. But I did notice that the right hand middle finger assisted fingering is not placed as far out as the alta flute. So I do think it has to do with the fact that 
the Alta flutes can be played with a straight head joint. Now for the packaging. In terms of the exterior cloth and the interior cloth, it's the same as the Alta flute, but it's just whatever interface they were using inside of this is a lot stiffer. There is an extra outside pocket. I didn't notice this at first because I'm not used to a pocket this giant. All you bassoon and clarinet and oboe people are probably laughing at me. You could probably even like stuff your music in here if you really wanted to. You can clasp the handle together. It makes it more comfortable for carrying. I did notice that the logo is only on one side because the other side is taken up by the pocket. So it is a lot easier on this case to see which side is the top side. It is yet again a French model case. We have the giant wooden cleaning rod in it. Here I'm just showing you the size difference compared to my normal sea flute cleaning rod. This thing is huge. We have a microfiber polishing cloth, cleaning gauze, the same owner's manual, and we have the quality checklist as well. Now let's get to playing around on this bass flute. <laughs> In fact, it threw me for a loop completely. We have the same pocket of air, but ironically on the bass flute, it's actually smaller. On top of that, the pocket of air moves in the exact opposite direction. For low notes, the pocket of air is sitting behind my top front teeth. For the high notes, this thing moves here. So this pocket of air is now like around my teeth like this. The thing that is similar with the alto flute is that you are still aiming at one specific target. So now it's the high notes where you're aiming your airstream coming out of it like straight forward. But your low notes has to angle the air downward like this to reach that same point right here. You definitely feel on this bass flute that when you're playing low notes, you're really going Oh. Part of the reason is that the lip hole itself is huge. So you have to cover more ground than when you're on a normal C flute. The really nice thing is that all of this is happening in like the front half of your mouth, half to a third of your mouth. I did find this to be one of the easier bass flutes for me to play. So if you're smaller like me, or you have like a small mouth, you may find that this bass flute is pretty easy to play because it doesn't utilize like your entire mouth. Same thing with the alto flute too. One random note, when I was just kind of noodling around, I did notice that the high E, it kind of has its own little placement. Usually it follows this trajectory where it just kind of goes like this. But for the high E, I suddenly have to bring it kind of back a little bit. It kind of goes like, er, like that. And this is your like special E position. I feel like I have to place it like, here. Okay, I suddenly have to move the whole pocket of air back. I already started training myself a little bit for fun to be able to do it and I could do it more now but it still tends to crack. On the flip side, are you really going to be playing a high E on a bass flute very often? No, okay? The bass flute was made to play low. Does this even matter in the end? I don't really think so. But just in case there's a composer out there who decided to write something absolutely insane for the bass flute, at least now you know that what that high E kind of feels like on this bass flute. And now for harmonics. <laughs> this again it's just gonna pop out really easily I do find that my sixth harmonic on this bass flute tends to split and it splits pretty badly but once I pop up to the seventh harmonic it's completely fine I think it breaks the pattern just a little bit I think it's kind of like that high E and now for tone color <laughs> to get a rich tone on this bass flute. It's more of like a holistic mouth shape you have to do instead of just focusing in on what you do with the pocket of air. For a rich tone, I find that I do have to kind of go full bullfrog again. So I have to 
kind of open up the bottom half of my mouth like crazy. I have to puff out my cheeks a little bit on the sides too, just like on the bottom. So I basically imagine a lot of extra space down here. To get a hollow tone is much more similar to the alto flute. So you do that thing where you squish it from the sides, but I do find that on this flute, I have to actively think of rounding out the top side of the note and then it, you'll get that really hollow tone. Same thing for high notes down here. And now for dynamics. <laughs> is exactly the same as on the alto flute. So for fortes, you just make your pocket of air, you just expand the pocket of air from the center of the pocket as much as you can. Oh, yes, there we go. You can also expand this one for the super high notes. For pianos, shrink it down straight into the middle. And now for the mechanism. <laughs> to the alto flute, it just is, the whole thing is just bigger. It has that same bounciness with like a little bit of resistance. All the keys share the same resistance. However, there are no trill keys and there is no B flat lever. It kind of reminds me of like a super sized version of like the little tiny prodigy models. There's no frills to this thing. Now my left hand thumb feels like it has to open up a lot more because the whole thing is bigger. It means that the distance between the key and the tone hole is also bigger. I just personally was not really used to that. And I realized that sometimes I was only opening it like halfway. <laughs> if you have smaller hands like me, just make sure you're actually opening it up the whole way. Now for articulation. <laughs> Tonguing on this flute actually reminds me of tonguing on a Yamaha. It's quite far back on the roof of your mouth, a fourth to a third the way from my top front teeth. So as you can see, it's pretty far back. I think depending on your mouth shape, it'll be a little bit more forward or a little bit more back from that. Because your single tongue is so far back, it means that the K part of your double tongue is also gonna be pretty far back. So I found that I was double tonguing at the very back of the roof of my mouth. This is before you reach the throat area. I feel like my tongue is coming back like up here. So the way I make myself do this is by not thinking of my tongue as doing a backwards and forwards motion, especially if your tongue is this far back already. If you think of a backwards and forwards motion, you're gonna want your tongue to like come all the way down down here. All right, that's not what we want though. I think of it more of like a seesaw motion. So this is my tongue and I think of it going like this instead, going up and down. So if you think up and down seesaw motion instead of back and forth, you'll end up doing this. All right, and there we have it. That is my review of this alto and bass flute by Jupiter. Let's go over how much they cost. So this is without the instant savings, by the way. As of October, 2018, without instant savings, the Jupiter alto flute with the straight and curved head joint costs $2,129. The Jupiter bass flute costs $3,739. I love the way these guys play. I immediately think of like flute choirs, music schools. These flutes would do very, very well in those situations. I hope you guys enjoyed that review and I hope you guys take advantage of the instant rebate. Let us know in the comments below what other flutes you would like for me and the Flute Center of New York to review for you guys. Also let us know what kinds of topics you guys would like for us to talk about because we are mixing that in with our videos this year. Be sure to follow the Flute Center of New York on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll put links to their social media in the bottom bar below. You can catch me on my social media, which which are also listed down below. My last video is playing right over here, which I will put a link to up here for you guys. Make sure you hit subscribe and that bell icon to get notifications of every time I post, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. I wear glasses, just so you guys know. There's too much of a glare on my glasses to film with, so I just film without them. The polishing cloth is actually the same exact cloth that I use for my glasses, and I stole that one from the Jupiter flute that I won during a raffle draw in 
music school. None of my cloths for my glasses actually work really well. It's a microfiber flute polishing cloth that works the best. That was just the fun little thing that I saw in there. I was like, oh, this is my glasses cleaning cloth.